Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.03. Sam, you'll notice that Linda's not here. Oh, okay. I've got that. <laughs> so thank you for taking the minutes today. You're so welcome. Thank you all for being here. Uh, our meeting purpose today is to uh, end discussion and board work. Chelsea, thank you for being online. Um, we will start with public comment. Do we have any members of the public present? You can see we don't in here online. It doesn't look as though we do. So I'm not going to read the preamble. I'm going to give it 30 seconds if someone pops on. And I think by 30 seconds, I'm in eight. <laughs> All right, then let's move on to um, policy decisions, second review and hopefully a vote to approve. Required policies F3, fire and emergency preparedness drills, and F4, access control and visitor management. Questions on the first, F3 fire and emergency preparedness drills. Chelsea, can you hear us okay? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. I should have started with that. Okay. Hearing no questions, I will entertain a motion to approve F3. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Katya moved, Megan seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, raise your hand or say aye, or both. Aye. 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 Excellent. Unanimous. Passes. F4. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, Megan. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we've got Chelsea unanimously passes. Aye. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm not going to say the real reason we're here, but the kind of meaty reason we're here um, to talk about the ends. The mission statement. These were composed a while ago. Um, and I think we had, we had a, um, we've started some great discussions and they have not quite been, have fit into agenda item, an agenda item that was already on. So I think Oh, it's hard to dive back into something that's already been started. Um, okay, let's think about why. Why do we want to reevaluate these? Do we think they're off? Very vague. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Please. Sorry to go back. Um, I was just wondering the letter that we had proposed to send out as a board. Yes. I thought that was to be on here to be approved, but is that going to be for the start of school? Or I thought we were doing it as a wrap up. Chelsea, I thought we had you to have a chance it. to connect with Ben? Um, yes, I did. And I got revisions of the letter from Rachel. And then I sent them to Ben and I said, I think this is what we're thinking. And he said, great, let me know if there's anything else I can do. And I said, okay. okay. Great. So I have it. I mean, I thought we were gonna revisit it at the next meeting, which I was thinking was not this meeting because there's like, you know, if we add everything to this meeting, then we won't talk about the ends, but. Um, 
Right. I mean, we were trying to keep the agenda very short. No, I do remember that. But then yeah. I remember asking last time if we were going to do it as like an opener to the next school year or closure to this school year. And I thought we all said closure. It's fine. I don't really care. It's not on here, so we can't vote. But I'm just bringing it up. Mm -hmm. I, so I was under the assumption it was too rushed to get it out for the 4th of July, considering that we were going to try to do revisions. So then we did the revisions and then did I send that out to the whole board after Rachel sent it to me? No. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I can do that. And then um, I would say we could get it out in August before or in at the beginning of September, like when school is starting. Which will, yeah. I mean, that makes sense when people are re-engaging. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think now's not a good time to start. With school. Agreed. Okay, just wanted to school. clarify. Is that, well, yeah, I no, thank we, you. Yeah, if we warrant it for the next agenda. Um, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. You want it on the August or on the? August. I, August. I think August, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta write that down. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry. No, that's great. I know Chelsea had also emailed us all um, information about the evaluation uh, process, but again. August meeting is what I believe you suggested. Chelsea, in terms of uh, putting the committee together, yeah, yeah, in her email. Okay. So we want to do that at the August meeting? Correct, August okay. 9th, I believe. So we'll put the committee together and talk more about it at the August meeting, but everyone got the information about like the time commitment and all that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you for that. So do be thinking if that's something um, you have the capacity for to be on the committee. Okay. Um, I mean, the term board work is pretty broad, so, and that is on our agenda. So I don't think we should feel bad about making sure. So thank you. Um, but back to the ends. What they are now, we're saying too broad, not necessarily. Well, maybe not. Okay. It's worth discussion. Yeah. So uh, I can bring us back to remember last, it, I believe it was last spring, we met with Jackie, and it was through Jackie and sort of revisiting what our work is and that our work is to make sure that we're reaching out to the community and checking in on our ends. And what she had suggested and what we did was to move into the portrait of a graduate process, partly because the state is encouraging all districts to have a portrait of a graduate, but also because Jackie, having been in a policy governance district was encouraging us to do that process because she felt like it would be a nice way for us to then look at our ends and sort of integrate the portrait of a graduate into the ends so that we can flesh them out a little bit more. So that was sort of the process that had been started. So we're not starting from just scratch. We've sort of done that portrait of a graduate which is now sort of a draft um, to sort of see if, and, and that was a community outreach, which we delegated to the administration to do for us as a board. So our role as a board is supposed to be going out to the community to gather that information. We haven't done that. We haven't been very good at doing that. So we sort of said, we haven't been doing this. Let's direct the administration to take a lead on it. We'll involve board members, but we won't commit the board to doing that whole process. Well, and I, I don't think it was necessarily for the administration to take on 
connection with the community. It was no, no, one no. avenue to take, much like another avenue is this letter trying to get right, them to right. engage. But it was with to us. direct her direct because doing community outreach like Portrait of the Graduate, it takes a fair amount of time and organization and the board hasn't really had the time or energy to do that mm -hmm. over the years. So it was to sort of jumpstart it was to direct the administration to do it so that we could get it going and get board members involved but maybe not having them lead the process just because it hadn't been happening. So, And that also made it so we were able to access Title I federal mm -hmm. funding for community engagement and outreach and empower students to do the work. So it actually, and board members were involved at every single meeting. So um, it uh, really worked out, in my opinion, very nicely and gives a really good uh, document for you to compare with the existing ends mm -hmm. and make some decisions, you know, and I, I, it sounds like you're thinking to form a committee to do a multiple series of meetings. Is that right? I didn't think a subcommittee. Okay. Um, I think the suggestion was that the board go out to it. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was recommended to you that the board, not necessarily a committee, um, be present at other places rather than expecting people to come to us mm -hmm. um, and share. So that is what the suggestion was. Um, but I do think that we should start with comparing what we've done or what, what our ends look like now with what came out of the portrait of a graduate because we we have that information and I don't know, it feels like a little bit like recreating the wheel to try to get another whole set of data. So if we start with this and if we feel like there are holes, then I would think that we could maybe fill those holes by putting together maybe another survey. But it, it does seem like we do have this information. We do have what our ends are and maybe we could look at the two together and Heather, I would, you know, ask for you to be maybe remind us of the portrait of a graduate sort of results. Right. Um, so and then and then we could start there. So would you like me to print up that information now or do you want to do this at a later date? Is that tonight's work? Um I mean maybe we could maybe you could pull it up now and we could start with critical thinking or yep. the first thing. On so the <clears throat> let me print some some copies of things so I can distribute and I can also put it up on the screen for um, for you and anyone else who may join online. Yeah, the screen would be great. Yep. And then we do you want say, printed copies? I think just more. More. I think just the screen oh, yeah. just for time. Really? But that's just my suggestion. I don't know how <clears throat> everybody else feels. I apologize for not being there in person. Okay. No, no. I think that's I think that's a good starting point, Chelsea. I mean, there are only we do have data. There are only so many times we're going to engage the community, and they're going to come and participate, and then not see results that they're going to engage with us. Right. You know, we, did, we did the Winston thing, and now we've done right. the of the graduate. We need to take that information and do something with it, or people will stop playing in our sandbox. Right. Yeah, Portrait of the gra Graduate was developed a long time ago. It's meant for to develop a mission mission statement, which is kind of the equivalent of what your ends are. Um, mm -hmm. Your ends are a little bit more goal specific. Um, what I see it as possibly doing um, is one of two things. One, it might add some specificity to the ends that you have. Right? <laughs> it might might allow things um, to kind of hone in, make more specific goals. Uh, the other piece, too, is it, it should probably give a good idea of what the priorities of the community are. Right. I mean, you've got like 14 different separate pieces there, but of those 14, what are the most critical in terms of what the community wants? Mm -hmm. um, so you, you might have data to be able to figure those two things out. Heather, do you feel like you could put things out? I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to do that, but um, I'm, I'm going to also get it ready to go up on, on a screen. I just have, 
<clears throat> because I worked on this for quite some time, I have many documents that are named POG. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. Um, Makes sense. Uh, um, mm -hmm. So uh, I think I'd like to share with you not only the consolidated um, information, but if you have the bandwidth for it, um, the raw, some of the raw data, meaning like some of the survey results where people were asked, what do you want in there? And some of it was really um, similar to what's in the ends. And some of it was very far fetched. Like, you know, um, we would probably not put in there really specific things like learn to swim. We might, but you know, so from the community, we have many, many pages of this raw data, which might make you feel that you have a chance to review the exact words that came from the community, right? These are the exact words. Um, but then, of course, we also have the compilation that the students um, and teachers and parents and community members and board members created as a draft of the POG. So we have we have all of that. Um, Proposal posted. I don't want the poster. Um, so if you open it up, then you're going to link into the meeting, okay. and then um, hit present. She's printing it too, that's why. I, want, I hope it prints well. I. Anyways, let me get it up on the screen. All right. So I'm going to my calendar. Yep. Or I said I just sent you the link in my an email. So it should be a one of your most recent emails, not the most recent. Why don't we open this all up while we're waiting? Yeah. There you go. Um, do you want to hand me one? No. Feel stuff over there. Because uh, they keep moving stuff around. They move around. Yeah. Choose a little up and down. And then you're going to want to shut off the microphone. Oh, your nails are so much nicer than yours. Hold on. <laughs> so I've got it on the other. Yeah, you want to shut your speaker off. And, uh, and then turn the sound all the way on. There you go. Let me get the detector. Oh, you got the trickiest one. <laughs> All the things to open. It was crap. I lost my leather mask on my glue. Oh, did they take it? <laughs> I usually keep one in my backpack and last time I went for security. Oh, they, they didn't like that. that. Oh. It's a lot of It's that. That's the, I think, what you're smelling. Now I need to see what's up. My pesto. So if it's open in the background, you can hit on through right. Wrong. I did, <laughs> and I've got this. Actually, my so, kids don't really uh, like it. I usually do window. it's green. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, Remy probably the name of which one. Is that the name of what you want? 
click on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've changed yeah. it from last. No, yes, sir. Uh, last week No, I know what would be easy to say to I could say, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want help? Probably scissors over there. Oh, yeah, librarians library usually have access. Yeah. But it's only going to show in that little window like that? Uh, okay. 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 Is there a way to, a little slide bar to just focus on maybe on that page? Bottom. I don't usually use Adobe. There you go. I designed a lot of yeah, chicken boards. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to get the printed copies, okay? Okay. Off the printer. Thank you, Heather. Well, what's interesting is the last is Critical Thinker, which we can immediately start comparing. What do you mean the last? The, it, it, once Heather scrolls down, can you pass that to you? I don't know. I wasn't oh, yeah, here when yeah, they were oh, doing yeah, the yeah, final yeah, thing, but I don't think this bigger, is bigger part, I think this is everything that, that they can't like that see the you know, they want the graduates to have. I don't think it's under priority order. You know no, 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 no. I know. It, it, I just I oh. said last to oh. bring oh, your so eye to it. That's all. It was in a packet, um, and I, I'm, I'm ordered. The fancy packet. It may have been the May 10th packet. Oh, and I wasn't sure. No, right? Like, which one you Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember that when Connor was what nine when Olivia was taking. If he's not, six. if he's not airborne every six feet, <laughs> yeah. 
We yeah, should a few times I because <laughs> I helped Olivia get the, the, the boys down to the pool. I was like, all right, we're stopping. <laughs> Guys, we're in town now. No money <laughs> business. And they just wanted to go off the sidewalk. Veered. I'm like, you have got to be predictable. That's what cars want. Yeah, it's not it's not even the kids, it's like the people not paying attention in the roads yeah. that scares me. My kids biking. I did I see I saw your boys biking. Yeah. yeah. My oh, I know one of my sons is usually looking backwards while he bikes the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, why? <laughs> Gotta make sure someone's watching. <laughs> The, the bike ped group that I'm volunteering with, we're we're thinking about getting some low cost mirrors, mm -hmm. just because that that is a hard skill for young kids to to look to look back to look back. But that's one of the things you have to do when you're riding like, uh, for transportation. You've got to you got to be checking. Like, so they have mirrors. <laughs> Yeah, also good if they have the earbuds in or something and can't hear the yeah, car. Like the better not. Better not. Like, I haven't seen that. Like, no. That was like the last time I were like, <laughs> just <laughs> thinking of the possibility. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. I seriously today, this morning, I said, I should print up all this stuff for them. Mm -hmm. And I said to Lane, What's on the agenda for? And he said, that We're just going to approve these Off two the policies, policy and that's it. We're done. It's going to be 15 minute meeting. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, oh then I guess it won't bother to print up all that stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really sorry. Well, I thought it was just this discussion, but this right. makes sense if we're looking at DOG. Don't worry. Um, and I'll give you your fancy one. Well, and no, what, yeah. What so what? What I printed for you is uh, like what it's going to look like in a brochure. But then I've blown up the tenants because it's designed to be printed larger than eight and a half by eleven. It's meant to be printed like a. Um, it would look like a school folder, type of size, right? So it would, it would be more of a poster presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so I have this one. And then I'm going to see if I can find that awesome. raw data, and we're going to add the raw data. Thank you. And this is such an exciting conversation. Yeah. I need to have this conversation. That makes sense. It's so good. So that's the pretty one. And then this is the one that's like more like big, big enough to read. Oh, I thought you meant like, because I would be like, So yeah, critical okay. thinking. So yes. We're going to start so with. we have this in front of us. We have our. Hi. Ends in front of us. One point one critical thinking. It happens to be last, but not prioritized last. Critical thinker. Yes, these could be moved around. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of overlap. There is. But mostly just, um, it, it, what I'm getting at is I, I agree with the too broad assessment in that the ends are kind of just the titles and yeah. it doesn't mm -hmm. explain what we mean, how, what it might look like, you know, their their thesis statements, but not mm -hmm. what it might look like in practice. In practice, mm -hmm. we would be involved with the result of what it might look like. Mm -hmm. Well, there's what the process might look like, and what the finished product would look like. So we would be the fin we would be right. Looking at what's the finished product? Right, and the and the means of getting to the finished product is right. the professional's job. Right. right, but critical thinker, while a finished product, is awfully vague. <laughs> yes. So I think even mm -hmm. if we're just going to put out finished product, it can be the next step to interpretation. 
I would recommend yes. that you move forward with uh, creating a strategic plan in the same way involving community members in the creation of a strategic plan to execute whatever you decide your ends are. So a five-year strategic plan, and you say if you want students to be able to be effective communicators, that's built into the strategic plan. Did we just do a strategic plan? We did with Winston. Winston. Just we kind of took the cart before the horse there, didn't we? Well, yeah. no, we did. Lane has been doing, you have a strategic plan. We've been, working on, we've been working on it based upon the ends that are there. Exactly. Right. Um, and but again, the question, question is, it's, it's never, it's been unclear to me if people are satisfied with the interpretation of the ends. I know the board is because you vote on it, but I mean more in terms of a broader community mm -hmm. piece. And so this is actually a good, good check on that. But the, the pieces that you're talking about are really good. There's process goals, right? That's your, the kind of the strategic plan is how you get there. There's outcome. Um, and so you would be looking at outcome process um, is kind of what we work on to decide how to get there. But there's board involvement in that too, because process typically involves budget. Mm -hmm. And so as we're going through the budget discussions, okay, if this is what you want, we've talked with the cabinet, we've talked with, um, you know, the faculty, these are the ideas on how to get there. This is what the cost is. What do we have the palette for mm -hmm. during those budget discussions? Um, it's kind of. Well, and also these are the ideas of how we get there. Not necessarily, obviously, something we vote on or something we approve. But I do think being observers of the process and not just this is how it went. Yeah, because the community isn't going to get that there is actual work going on unless we are discussing process, how, mm -hmm. what we're doing mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. and so I think would it be helpful to discuss process then? I believe, again, in my experience, though, I know it goes against policy governance. I believe it would because these meetings are a very good platform to have those discussions. You know, these are the, these are the things that we're planning to do to meet this goal. This is where we're at. This is the work we've done. This is the cost so far. Um, because otherwise, it just if they're just... Once a year, you're looking at outcomes. People don't know what's going on in the district. So I think that I think that maybe we've been misapplying policy governance. You know, like it's a it's a fine structure, but it's not the only thing we do, right? Like, like it can be even be the core of what we do, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the only thing we do. And I'm not I'm not trying to poo poo on on policy governance at all, but. I think in being able to reflect back over the last couple of years, given the, a couple of them were COVID, those were things that I see missing that I think might have helped in terms of public perception. Because there's been a lot of work going on, we just don't talk about it that much. Right, and I think it's irresponsible of us to just expect a result and not um, express buy-in to the process. We need to express buy-in, and as does the community. The result even if it's positive, is great. But if we don't know or understand how we got there. Or what we're trying to do to get there. And, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, can I ask a point of clarity on the note-taking piece? Like that conversation right there. Did I have to get everyone's no. line items there? Mm -hmm. so you could, you could just say just okay. discussion <laughs> about po uh, POG <laughs> in relation to ends. You're required to get any motions and things like that, any decisions. But. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good read. Any <laughs> items? Any <laughs> 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 well, items? You know, you know, the minimal requirement is what you got, what, what you vote on, and what, what yeah. is just what you. There was a silent pause. Okay. Sorry. All right. You folks, I gotta stop saying guys. So, so if. I mean, just to kind of bring this back around in a sense that if there's if it's not policy governance or if it's a, if it's a combination of the good things about policy governance and something else, what is the something else? So I think what's important for me and maybe for others to remember is that we're not we don't have to sign in blood saying this is. Um, the name of this is the formula we're using and it's named after this person and this is the, the book that we follow that's not necessarily required if we figure out some sort of combination where because I, I, I think at this point policy governance has us scared it's so I, to do the wrong thing 
because I think it's gotten to a point where there's we're so focused on what we can't do or can't ask or can't um, be involved in that we're not doing anything that we can. We get so stuck with what we can't. So I think I, I what I'd like to be able to say is I'd like to have some oversight and understanding of the process, not dictating the process, but I think policy governance has gotten us to a place where we can't, we, or I feel we can't even question the process or push to understand it, push, push back, not disagree with it, not disapprove it, we're not approving it. That's not what we do. But I think, and I hope it would also be helpful to the people who are operating the process to be pushed. Um, so, you know, reports not just Lane, we're not supposed to have contact with staff except through Lane. Well, I think that feels too restrictive, right? So we've talked about having the principals coming and talking about mm -hmm. Okay, critical thinking. What 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 are you? What does this mean to you? What are you doing to? And that's something they would have already talked to with Lane, their supervisor. But instead of hearing it from Lane, who also I mean, they're not going to say anything different, but hearing it from the people who are doing it, I just I I don't want us to get to a place where we feel like we're um, we have to sign a commitment to something that has a title, I think we can create what we feel we need to be for this district, not Google search different forms of school board. I've done it. Has anybody else done it? You know, different structures for a school board. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out the structure for the OS. I'm talking right to you and I don't mean to, I'm sorry. We need to figure <laughs> out the structure of the OSSD board that might not look exactly like someone else's. Yeah. The only thing that I ask is that, you know, as, as stuff comes up, if there's questions, you ask them and, 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 and let us answer and, and whatnot. But I, one of the things that I go back to the first couple of years without going into a lot of detail, there was a lot of cleanup in this district. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of things that needed to be cleaned up um, that had been going on for a while. The reason that they happened even then in discussions with the board was because the board was too disconnected. And I don't know if it was policy governance that made that happen, but there's a disconnect here that makes me nervous too in that it's great. I've got all this autonomy. I'm kind of doing my thing, but I never really, is this what people really want? Is it, you know, there, there's always that question, but I think having a little bit more of that contact helps fulfill the oversight responsibilities mm -hmm. um, that folks have. Um, and fulfilling policies that don't aren't just um, a, ability to adapt and then basically defining what adapt means. Yeah. You know, and, and the power that if if we're on the same page and we've had the discussion, it's great because you get more minds at the table looking at things. Um, but it's also that backup, right? As a, as a as a board and as a superintendent, and after having discussions with the community, this is the path that we've decided on, and this is why we're doing it. So when I push a little bit, if folks are reluctant, um, even though they've been involved and it's been vetted, um, I know that I've got that backup there. I think it'll make sure. things a little bit easier because this is the the the, the goals that 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 the, that the district has, and this is what we need people to to work towards. Right, yeah. and I also think that the the cleanup that you refer to, I think, is is because you had to clean up things that were in in the past or had been had been established in the past and i think that there's a lack of looking forward because yeah. there's still a lot to clean up yeah a lot um and if we can redesign these to be specific about okay once it's cleaned up what does that look like what Because this specific district has very specific challenges to get to a student's ability to adapt. Every district has their challenges, but this one here has huge ones to overcome and clean up yep. still. 
Mm. Agreed. You were going to say something. And I yeah, I was just going to say I appreciate your point on creating a custom model that works for our district. And I guess for what I would like to see is for the board to have a little bit more agency in owning some of the direction that we're going in. Um, so that way we can provide more of a unified front and provide more backup to the administration, but also, you know, be able to hold the administration's feet to the fire if we say, okay, let's let's tweak it this way, you know? Let's, um, so I don't know where that balance is without getting too involved in the process, uh, but that's just, that's what I would like to see mm -hmm. so we could have a little bit more of a community front. So when you, I wrote down three words, agency, owning, direction. What does owning the direction mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I think these are too vague for me. Um, of course, these were, these were implemented before I was involved. And um, I, I'd like to drill down deeper on, on each of them and figure, flesh out like what is, success in mathematics look like? What does success in science look like? What does success in critical thinking look like? Um, because we're already constrained so much with our reporting abilities, right? We only, you know, I don't feel like, I don't know, we're stopping at ninth grade to a certain degree with a lot of stuff. And I don't know, if we can change the mechanism for how we evaluate <clears throat> success in one discipline or another, I, I, I'd like to explore what that looks like. How does, you know, is it college placement or is it job placement? Is it, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, is it student surveys where the students feel like they have a voice in what's going on in the community? Is it faculty surveys that are more frequent where faculty can voice their opinion and how do we collect and aggregate that data and make it effect, you know, useful to the direction that we're going. Um, but I don't know, I just think public school systems in general are constrained by these boxes that we have to fit each student into. And I don't think it's all that realistic. Um, we've noticed that with standardized testing um, to a great degree. Um, so I don't, kind of just rifting right now, but if we could use dialogue to, you know, measure people's, the climate of the community. I mean, that's the big one for me right now is, do we have a healthy climate and, or are we too siloed in each group, the union, the um, faculty or staff, the administration, the board, the general public, the student body, I don't feel like we have great alignment um, but amongst all those different groups. I think we're very siloed. So whatever we can do to get more of that intel to the table in a more transparent manner seems like it would benefit company culture. Mm -hmm. Did you get that all down? Yeah. <laughs> the table being the I recorded table. it. Um, I mean, I know, like, the, the, yeah, yeah, the yes. table, but. Yes, yes. I mean. I assume you mean for us to have that information. Yes, yes. Well, I think we've explored things, too, in, in that, I mean, we have explored bringing student voice onto the board, and I think that I would still really advocate for that, of having student representatives, student board representatives. Um, there's just other ways to kind of help that, as Sam mentioned, like help kind of increase that bi-directional conversation in ways that are beneficial. Like reporting back at each meeting. Um, I, I get like yeah, this I mean, when I think about it. Well, no, I mean, I've, I've, so I I've, there are school boards that have student representatives mm -hmm. as part of the school board. And there are students that sit in to school board meetings and they may bring, um, you know, if they're 
as part of student council, they may bring kind of a report of what's happening in student council, but they all may also be good, like, you know, voices in the conversation. If you're having a conversation about the school, it's, it's always, I think, great to actually hear kind of from those that are living in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and staff, how do we get that voice? Yeah, I mean, that's, we have that voice through the union, mm -hmm. but and that's a, we're, you know. We're, we're trying to connect with them, but getting them, you know, part of the reason of the listening sessions, which board members are welcome to be at too, um, has been an, an attempt. Um, and again, I'm gonna speak openly here and hopefully it stirs some people to come in and, and take a counterpoint to it. But what I've seen over the last couple of of months, and I, I think it's probably a result of the constant negotiations the last couple of years on, on contracts, is that there seems to be a wall between union administration staff. Easiest thing to do is to talk directly with the staff, but there's a wall that's in place that's being set up here so that that doesn't happen. So the conversation ha has to happen here. Um, and that's made things difficult. Um, and that's one of the reasons I started the listening sessions was to have the communications directly with the staff, to hear from the staff, have them hear from me, and not filtered through uh, a, another body that seems to be in the way of those direct conversations. Um, I think there's been some progress made lately, but it's, it's been difficult. Um, you're, from a high level assessment, you're, you're a district where People did their own thing for years and years and years. So anybody coming in trying to change direction um, is fighting decades of folks just being allowed to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And so you can vet it, you can discuss it um, as, as much as you want, but in the end, if things are gonna change, things have to change. Um, and so at what point after how many conversations and after how much vetting do you just pull the trigger and say, okay, now we just gotta do it. Mm -hmm. And we're getting to that point with some things where we just gotta do some of the things if we want things to get better. Uh, but there's pushback um, because people are used to doing their own things. It's like taking away a privilege that they've always had that they probably shouldn't have. Um, but it's, it is the taking away of a privilege, being able to just kind of do your own thing, whether it's in your classroom or whether it's as a principal within your school. Um, that was the culture for years and years. And that's been a huge roadblock. Anyway, I'm talking, I, I shouldn't be down there. I mean, is there a way to invite, I mean, I guess this might be going against union, um, but is there, again, I don't know if this would be okay with the union, but is there a way to like invite a staff representative who's not a mm -hmm. union, like a union representative? Like they're just here as a, in a staff capacity, but they're not like. Uh, you can, they do have the right to control the messaging to the staff. And so it's uh, it's just, that's what I've been trying to do in, in recent conversations is, yeah, we want you there as a union, but but we want more of the staff. Let's let's have these conversations big and broad. And, you know, I'll like I said to them, I'll give you a whole day of PD at the start of the year. We'll all sit down, we'll have a whole faculty there because this con concerns and these discussions are about everybody. And let's just have that open talk. Um, and I have not been able to get them to allow that to happen. This is a naive question, but are all staff members members of the union? Uh, I'm going to say yes and no. Um, no in the fact that they don't have to pay dues if they don't want to be a member, but yes in the fact that by law, the union is the only group that can represent them. Okay. And they are the only representatives, so no individual staff member can, a teacher can come and represent themselves. Um, whether they want to or not, the union has that control by law, by statute. Yeah. I'm Some just wondering contracts. if it's framed more as a as a pie in the sky kind of conversation yeah. or we listening just session. Sitting face to face and talking and not behind the scenes and it's it's gotta be face to face open discussions. It's how you get to know people and how you build relationships. Yeah. It's been very hard to get people to come um, and have those so meetings. But I think spinning it like that, these are pie in the sky kind of conversations. What do you like want to what if you had all the money in the world for your classroom, what would you want to be able to do? That right. kind of just the, the positive forward thinking kind of listening session or invite. Tell us 
the the your your dream classroom model or something like that that's not about tell us how you feel about something that's happening right now yeah let's look forward together it's a vision. yeah because i think you're right most of the contact we have with staff is negotiations which is just contentious and Mm-hmm. And the process is set up to make it that way. It's not the union that's contentious. It's how no. that process, that collective bargaining process. Is Absolutely. Yeah. But that being the only um, Face to contact face. that we have with them, rather than yeah. come and tell us not how it's going right now, although, of course, we're interested in that, but how could it be going? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Heather. <clears throat> You're welcome. Yeah, what I've provided you with is, and, and be aware, this is only one method of data collection that's really easy for me to share at a quick notice. Um, so this was the original survey that invited people to write a narrative, and then a subsequent survey that invited people to vote um, on like their top five of you know 15 different choices to be on the POG. In addition to these, we did postcards for people who are not comfortable with online surveys. We pushed into classrooms and had students do drawing exercises or written responses to like, I dream of a school where, and a lot of that was compiled and I'm sure I can get the compilations, but I don't have them tonight, I'm sorry. But this is just a representative piece of some of the raw data. There was a lot more, there were chalk talks and other methods of of collecting information from the community. Um, and the students did it with staff as well. So mm-hmm. the students met with the teachers and did it. I, I don't know how many teachers. Oh, they did it at the faculty meeting. Oh. They were pushed into so faculty meetings. Every, every faculty member who was present that week at faculty meetings at the elementary and high school. So we've and some. so the effort was to get something from every student every staff member and as many community members as were willing to participate. And I think the kids did a pretty good job. Um, I mean, my I love it and I'd love there to be a subsequent document that's more measurable. Like, what do we mean by that? How do we measure that type of thing? Mm-hmm. So that we're, we, we can measure where we are in our vision. Okay, so can we can we go back to the mechanics of change of having we're talking about customizing our policy governance to OSSD's district. Um, we're talking about making these ends more in depth. How do we actually execute that? Short of all of us deciding right now what we want to see. <laughs> And even if we were to all decide what we wanted to see, what do we have to do to him? Implement them like change the ends? Yeah. We just rewrite them. That's our, that's um, our. Or add specific layers underneath. You add bullets underneath that make it more specific what you mean. Right. In some ways, I would like to just sort of take and underneath, instead of it just put this right underneath our mission statement. It's it's pretty specific. It gives the broader idea, but then it is specific. And I mean, we could then we can we can dig in and and take on the 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 task of a professional educator and then try and figure out the I mean the board has the ability to do that personally I don't think that would be a very wise thing for our board to do but if people on the board would like to do that there's nothing that says the board can't go to that extreme they could, the board could say this is what it means for 
third and fourth graders and we can we can map right out and we can say this is what we want I and mean, it would take a lot of we'd have to do our we'd have to do some research and maybe get educators in here to tell us what they think good benchmarks are but the the difference between the board doing that and delegating it to the to the to the superintendent, in the past, we've delegated that process to the superintendent and the professional educators. Right, the and we've kept people. it pretty broad. And then he has to then take these ends and interpret them into measurable, measurable uh, outcomes so that his ends report shows us that he's, that he's accomplishing it. And of course, for many of these, he may not be in compliance initially, but what he has to do is say, I'm not in compliance. I'm projecting that I'll be in compliance in the next two years, I'm working toward this or this is why. Um, and each of these, when, when he picks a, a measurement that he's gonna use, he gives a rationale for it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, some objective test that he's giving them. He could, he could, he could say, I'm using this. And, and what is supposed to happen is he's supposed to be digging down in and using his professional educators, his curriculum specialists, his teachers to kind of come up with what are some, what are benchmarks that, that would be here and what's the rationale we are you know those are the professional educators who know the educational theory they they they've done some research some of them depending many of them have a lot of experience so you know this could be you know a, a measurement that we that we use to 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 show as evidence that this is being accomplished. And that, so that, I think, Anne, that you're describing two extremes, where one is we're prescribing, okay, a third grader needs to know this and be this, and mm -hmm. I'm not qualified to do that. And right. I'm very happy to say that I'm not, and I'm very happy that there are people that are. But then the other extreme being, here's this broad statement mm -hmm. that can be interpreted reasonably Mm -hmm. we're given reasonable evidence to see that you're in compliance. But, but I think there's somewhere in the middle where we can say, here's this broad statement, but here are some more very specific things. Right, that's what this is. Right. That's, what the, that's where we go out to the community and say, this is, you know, this is what we've come up with. Is there something more? And, and again, I mean, my complaint with these initial ones from the get-go is they're very, very vague. The, now that we've sort of, we've gone out to all the different entities, we've got much more specific uh, description of what, it, what we're looking for. And, and so then you push that back Right. to the educators to then say, okay, what do, what would this look like in a system K-12? By, by third grade or fourth grade, kids should be, mm -hmm. you know, and have benchmarks along the way. Because the other thing that, that from Brent K to, to our current superintendent, we have no checks in our system. It's all at the tail end. Well, we've got a big, huge ship we're, we're steering, and we steer it with these, but we don't check in at third, third and fourth grade. At, well, I'm gonna, we're, because we're, we're, of, we're public, I'm gonna qualify that statement. The board does not check in, right? But we have plenty of data from every grade along the way because I built the assessment system, systems that allow us to do that. So I just want to make sure that the community knows, yes, we do know what's going on with our third graders and our second graders. No, no, I'm not saying, uh, that should be yeah. in an ENDS report. And we but should by have delegating that. It, by, by delegating it and saying, to figure it out, 
and not having any oversight or any understanding no, the oversight and only is getting the information from this one person. And, and, and I it do may, not and it may or may not be what you want. That, right. That's my, my problem. I don't know what you want. Tell and to understand want. how you got it and who got it and, and that's in why the that report. works for. That's in the ENDS report. From that's, him. Yeah. I, I want reports from other people. I want to understand how it got there. Uh, like from the so, principals? So like from the principals? Yes. And, the and staff, then everyone and then, who was within the process that I'm not prescribing, I have delegated. But just because I delegate it and, it are not, and I'm not prescribing it doesn't mean that I shouldn't be in, involved, understand, observe, and have oversight over that process. Okay, so you're not gonna, if he gives a report that's sort of, that's working through the system with the educators and the principals, we, you're feeling like the board needs to hear a report from the teachers to say, yep, we gave these, we, we decided on these benchmarks, the, we gave these assessments. We tabu You want to hear that from no, the teachers? No, I don't. That's all dry data. Okay. Well, what do you want to hear from the teacher? Data. Well, what do you want to hear? I guess I'm more uh, um, not numbers. And that's I'm I'm I'm, I'm I feel rifting rifting. I don't know which one it is. Um, because I'm figuring out my answer in real time. So yeah. I just want to be yeah. clear about that. Um, there's, th there's something about the word report that I'm having some sort of reaction to, that that is what we are receiving. It feels dry, it feels cold, and, and disconnected. 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 Thank you. Yeah. I'm in agreement. Um, I think a, a you know a couple of possibilities that are kind of in the middle a little bit. Ooh, Chelsea, you got a hand up. Chelsea, go. Yes, I do. Um, so I think Anne, you make a really good point about having to assess things like like I I don't want to say not the fun stuff because it's not necessarily fun stuff, but like you have to assess those benchmarks at the grade levels to see if kids are, you know, reaching a certain reading level, reaching a certain math level, like those things are important. Um, I think that's already written into the ends. And I think that the teachers are very focused on that. And it, it seems to me that processes are being put in place to sort of push that along. What I do see missing from the ENDS report completely is any sort of positive culture benchmark, <laughs> which I think is something that should be added. So that would be, you and have I to think change your maybe ends. that's what you're talking about, Hannah, when, right, right. But that's, but that's what I think Hannah might be talking about when it comes to um, when it comes to looking at how our school is performing, and we hear these reports in the high school. I mean, you're talking about bringing students in for from student council so that they can be a part of the school board. But honestly, there's no student council, and there hasn't been for a couple of years. So, like. Those kinds of things, I think, are things that the board needs to know about that they might not necessarily know about. And adding something like that to the ends is, I think, it might be an idea, just an idea. And no, you, you've you've hit it on the head. Um, it would just it would need to be added added to the ends if you stay with the system, which is fine because then we know what we're shooting for and what folks want. But if you read your end statements about what's there. Um, so two, two possibilities is that in terms of connecting with the folks that, you know, that have the most knowledge, which is what we did in terms of developing the current end statements that we have and the, that go along with it. But 
you've got this portrait of a graduate, you know, it might make sense to have a facilitator come in, bring, bring staff and students and, and whatnot together and say, you know, in terms of our ends, explain what, what, what they are and, and, and what it implies for the district and its work and start to have them adapt what this means in terms of ends and give the specifics. Um, that might be a good process. Plus you've got folks engaged having the conversations that they should be having um, and developing things that you know that everybody is going to be, um, have buy-in on because they developed it for the most part themselves, you know, with a little bit of, a little bit of guidance along the way. Um, so that's one possibility. The other piece to go back with what Ann was saying earlier in terms of the board prescribing things, you know one of the ways that boards typically prescribe foundational knowledge for kids is through your graduation requirements for students, right? How many years of English? How many years of social studies? How many years of health? How many years of life skills? Um, and that's uh, another typical way, if you don't like the numbers, then foundational knowledge in social studies means every student has four years of social studies to graduate and successfully completes and passes. Um, that's another way of doing it. Um, but that's typically, it's one of the things I've been talking a little bit with the high school about is because the, there's some things there that need to be upgraded. But that's one of the ways that the boards, you know, usually state their foundational knowledge is through how many years of studies and what subject are supposed to have. Um, and that's board set graduation requirements. Yeah. So just some ideas that are coming up through, through a good, rich conversation. Mm -hmm. Do we not have graduation oh, requirements? That's what I was going to ask. They're in the student handbook. In the student the... handbook. Right? Okay, yeah, that's what my question was. Um, Shouldn't they also be an hour handbook? Shouldn't they also be an hour packet? Especially if it's something we prescribe. Well, the state require. there's a state prescribed thing as well as and then schools will put in their own handbook um, and staff love yeah. having things prescribed in terms of graduation requirements because if we only have a one-year social studies requirement now and you move it to three or four you're providing job security mm -hmm. because if you require it we have to have the staff to carry it out um, I can tell you in, in looking and in reviewing those graduation requirements that they are very shy of what most schools are doing now. Why is this the first time we're hearing that? Well, maybe not because be my work on. has been my work has been on the ends that the board has prescribed. And I'm trying to find other ways as the conversation mm -hmm. comes up. Ann had a very good conversation about with me a while back about other ways of, of potentially looking at ends. And one of them being how, you know, how many courses in a certain discipline and, you know, for a student to be able to graduate. And so it strikes the graduation requirement piece. And so I've been looking at that lately. Can we get a copy when, when the school, when the new handbook is out, can we get a copy of the... Yeah, actually, I actually, I think just, I have a copy, but I just have to find it. Can that just be part of the routine? Like One of the things that should be one of the things that, that a board does is... Um, review the handbooks? Mm-hmm. Typical, typical school boards, um, again, there's the policy side of things and there's the, the way the policies are carried out, but typically any new policies in a handbook are, are voted and vetted by the board. And again, the other thing that that does is it adds weight that when we're carrying out something that might be difficult, mm -hmm. that it's been vetted by the board, it's been approved by the board, we are carrying, car carrying out the, the will of the community in terms of the schools and that, that's helpful because there's a lot of things that we're trying to change to improve climate, culture, academics, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And it's been very hard because it's kind of just been us. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, and that's not a, I don't mean that to be a, a criticism. It's part of reflecting upon where we're at, what, what, what might make things better. But typically student handbooks every year, if there's changes to them, boards uh, vet and vote. And then um, graduation requirements. These are things that normally. If there's changes to them, but we have new board members every year. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, I think they you're suggesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. they should be vetted. Your policy year. governance has delegated a lot of that kind of to us, but I still don't feel comfortable with it because I'm just not used to that. That's usually a board piece. That's policy. That's board. Um, you know. Are there other things like that that we should be doing as a board that we're not currently doing? I think I, I'll do some reflection on it, but those are the two biggest ones um, in my experience. Yeah, in your, in your time in Marblehead, how did, what, what were the metrics that Marblehead High was using? Every, again, 
Massachusetts is a little bit different than Vermont, but Massachusetts is more like every other state in the union than Vermont is. Um, what they cared about, they wanted to see their AP scores, they wanted to see their state testing scores, um, they wanted to see where the kids were going to, to college and graduation. Now remember, different population, 98% sure. of those kids were going to a private four-year school. Sure. Um, probably 20 to 30% of them were going to the Ivy Leagues. Um, but again, those were the, the typical things as a principal that I would come up and as the principal, I would do reports to the board on mm -hmm. You know what those scores were each fall. I do my state of the school address to the on the opening day of school, where we would go over the same data with the faculty. We'd review it. I had a bunch of processes that were set up. Okay, we've got some identified weaknesses here. Um, when you go off on your first day, you're going to use what I call the CSET process that 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 we created, um, where they kind of figure out where the kids are weak and what they're going to do differently this year to address you know those 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 weak areas in terms of what they're running uh, and what's happening in the school. And that was just a yearly process. It's just what we did. It was the culture. Okay. That's part of what I've been trying to establish here a little bit with reasonable, you know, there's been, been a lot of pushback on it. And again, it's not because they're not reasonable people, it's because they've been able to do their own thing for so long, I'm honing in on their territory. Um, and so it's, it's, it's understandable that they're pushing back, but there's gotta, we gotta come to a meeting of the minds or at some point in time, like I said, we just gotta pull the trigger on some things. This is a very specific question, but if there was a policy change in the handbook, when would that come to us, like in the rhythm of the year? So normally what would happen is um, if it was an emergency thing, you, it might be at your next meeting. You, we, I, we'd ask you to put it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. But typically um, it gets done in the fall, um, and that's for the next year, kind of like the budget process is done a year in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they work on it in the fall. Usually by February, I think they'd vote it in. You should also, uh, the other piece that goes along with that is the program of studies. Um, As the budget keepers for the district, you have the indirect method of deciding which courses we teach and programs we run and which ones we don't. Um, because, yeah, you're not supposed to be fiddling with it, but you have an indirect way of saying, yeah, no, we're not going to vote for that budget because you're trying to add this program that we don't like. Um, but usually program of studies is also something that's at least reviewed by the board. A lot of boards will, will actually be the ones that voted in. Um, other boards, what they will do is they will do what's called a vote of support. So they're not saying, yeah, this is what you can do or what you, what you can't do, but we like, we like what you're doing and it's in line with the mission that we have for the district, so we're going to give you a vote of approval for those changes. So in this um, scribbled list of maybe August agenda things, in terms of an annual agenda, August might be the time that we would review handbooks and programs, programs of study. Is that... Yes. Uh, yes. Could uh, I well, I'd say a little, I'd say a little bit later because it's for the next year. Usually October. You give give people time okay. to get in, get settled, get the school year running in October, October, November. Usually by February ish is when they were voting. January, February is when they were voting on the changes to handbooks. And things. So because this is kind of a fresh, it feels fresh to me. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm information. Just, no, I just feel like maybe on the August agenda we could review these things that we're I'm unfamiliar with. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd like I'm to insert admitting. changes to the handbook should be considered um, like procedure, not policy. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a policy at all. Mm -hmm. And they should be living documents. So if at any time we need to update what we're doing for fire drills because a new thing has come up, right. the principal can open it up, put in the new policy, put practice the, on yeah. fire drills, and email it out to the community and say, uh, please see update under section, you know, fire drills, whatever. Um, but the, the the protocols, because I, I the the pro the, the hand, hand, she's right. The handbook <laughs> is protocols, but the protocols are based on policy. Right. So if we're putting in new pro protocols that haven't been there before, that's because there's a policy that either exists or doesn't exist that the board needs to approve on. So boards have always, in my experience, have always approved the handbook or not. Uh, yeah, because that of how makes close sense it is. to me. So sorry about that. No, no. When was the last time we had changed our handbook? Every year, there's changes. They change it every year. Especially during COVID. We were changing them sometimes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You know, I, our, our practices had to change on what constitutes sick to keep your child sure, home, right? Sure, and then it, sure. 
Then there was test to stay. Um, <clears throat> Last year, it was the cell phone policy we were trying to get in to help with the yeah. culture. There were a couple of other pieces at the high school that we put in in terms of s student dress and and things like that that have been going in. But those are things that should be discussed, you know, at least with the board. And if, if you don't want to do a formal vote in of the thing, it could be just a board approval. Yeah, we think that we can see the process that you're using to try to get us where we want to go, and this makes sense. <clears throat> so, for example, a homework policy, would that be considered a change to the handbook? Gotcha. Do, you have a, do you have a policy that requires homework? No. No. That would be a change to the handbook that would be good for the board to review and say, yeah, you're on the right track. But remember, this is where the policy governance comes in and what it tries to protect. If you are asking me to accomplish things and I have things that will get us there and you tell me no, it's not my fault we didn't get there, George. Mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, some things we so have to So that negotiate. means we basically, we either rubber stamp everything that you put, to, put or together you say, Go or find we something say different. no. And then you we, say, well, then don't hold me accountable for getting to these ends because you tied my hands by saying I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. And you changed the, the plan of study. No, so it's but, sort but, but of but like, you, okay. What you, what you do is say, we realize that this is important. Find another way. And then it's my job to go out and find an alternative to it. So it's not just a blank no. And, and, and because the problem that the, that, that like a homework policy is trying to solve, the problem doesn't go away, whether we have a, right, if, if, if we just, the homework policy is voted down and we do nothing, we still have the problem of the kids learning and retention. So then we just try to find another way to do it. Maybe more expensive, it may be, but again, that's, that's the board's desire and that's the control that, that a board does have. Um, Slippery slope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the yeah. That that's that's my feeling, but if it, it seems like there are many people on this board who feel like they need to have more control in what's happening in the in the I think school. we definitely need to have more so. discussions. Um, just so people know what's happening. But you're also asking for the board to then come along and approve handbooks and approve I'm stating courses what I've seen other study. boards do yeah. and, and why. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's a great use of the board's time. And I don't think the board has the expertise to be doing that necessarily. I think the board. I think the board can understand it, and have an idea of we chose this. That's that rationale part of the ends is we chose this course of study because we feel like that's going to get us to this end and to this outcome. But for me, as a as a, especially currently, one meeting a month with my expertise in education, I'm going to decide whether or not this plan of study is a good one or it should be changed or. Well, the, the program of study, sure you know, I think a that. logical process. And again, this is this is one of the ways that we could do it. And I'm like, I, I process out loud as I talk. Um, so I, I apologize for that. Um, but I think one of the ways that we could do it is, is, you know, we say, you know, once a year or once every other year, we, we're going to have on the agenda that we, we review the graduation requirements. And it's my job to come in and give the board recommendations and give you the information and, of why I think that that's good based upon the conversations that I've had with folks, what's happening in and around the world, what the other expectations are at other districts, and, and, and you make a decision on it. Um, I mean, part of my job, too, is to be an informational resource to the board to make those decisions. Um, and so, but that's, you know, if I'm coming in and I'm being reasonable and rational, logical, then it seems like it would be a no-brainer to say yes. And if I'm not, you, you are all very capable people to say, hey, that doesn't make sense to me, or it looks like you might be missing something there. And that's good feedback to get. Uh, so, but that's the teamwork piece. Um, you know, it's it's a lot better with a lot of minds looking at it. Um, but just some thinking. Off. 
just have to write disgust. <laughs> you don't have to do it, word it, for it. word. They can look it's on it. You don't it's, have it's to do word titles for the video. <laughs> right. But I appreciate this sort of a discussion because it's getting people to thinking of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And if there are changes that need to be made, if you want to stick with policy governance, there's nothing wrong with policy governance. I feel we need more discussion. I don't want the board to be as distant. I want more oversight because I think that was the problems and some of the problems that I cleaned up at the beginning. Um, but I also feel that the discussions are valuable for the community to hear and, and for other folks because they get the, the, the logic behind why we're doing what we're doing or why, why we're doing it and, you know, doesn't mean that it's always going to pay off, but there, there's some good rationale behind what we're doing and why. So. <coughs> Well, and as a board member, I would like to be able to get out to the community and say, These, this is what we're doing. This is the rationale behind what we're doing. And here's where we're at. And this is what we're targeting to. Um, I don't want to, uh, personally, I don't think it's a good use of my time in a meeting to be reviewing the handbook uh, the no, dress but code. If, we're, if we come in and talk about the changes and why we're making them, that's probably good for people to know. Or why we're recommending them they be changed. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the reason that it could be embedded in the rationale for why, you know, we're, we're working on this. This is how we see ourselves getting there. We've implemented this or that so here's, in order to... to hit this target and this is the reason for doing it here's a really interesting thing that i want folks to think about where the generality may have caused problems that we didn't want climate issues at the high school have been a topic for a long time mm -hmm. when we did the research and did some surveys early on we settled on the idea that it was a it was it was an equity and a social justice issue and we worked on equity and social justice and look where we ended up. Was that the intent, you know, when, when we did began doing that work? And that's the problem with generalities, right? We had data that we were following. We were doing the work for, for a good reason, um, besides the fact the state's requiring it. Uh, but we thought that that was the root of the, the, the climate piece. That, that is a part of the climate issues here, but it is not the biggest part. Um, as we're discovering but again that generality um in terms of what to work on is is has been difficult to, to navigate sometimes uh, i'm not sure if i'm making any sense it makes sense in my head <clears throat> but. Yes, sir, sir. <laughs> so i'm just wondering like how We can take this piece of paper, add to it what we want to add to it, delete what we want to delete, and then every meeting look at it to see how we're getting there. And in my mind, I would I say to myself, I think that it would be great to have representatives from the school, teachers, students, staff, whoever, to come in and tell us about every single one of these things every single month. But I know that we don't have a ton of time to get everything done all the time, the way we have it set up right now. But those seem like they are the most important pieces of our work, of, of the school's work, of the most important pieces in our ability to monitor sort of the job that's being done. What if um, we talked about having a principal come to a meeting? What if they invited someone to each meeting, such as a student or a staff member? They used to. And we discussed the ends with them as part of the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just have to start start somewhere and make maybe a small change or the September meeting, you know, and then let the whole school community know about it and then just start there and then just have it be a work in progress. I, you know, we can, 
I'm I'm trying I think to figure our eggs. It out, but it's hard. <laughs> it's such a it's like eat, eating an elephant. <laughs> I think I think our our ends need to be a work in progress, but we can't we can't adjust them every month because that's that's no no I agree okay. I agree a hundred percent but I just mean the process I mean I think we should just start somewhere and maybe do it for a year and then look back and say did that work what would we like to add what didn't work or or six months or you know I don't know. I think I think your starting point is deciding if you need to adjust those ends so we. So we know what we're working on, or if anything's changing in terms of what we're working on, which is fine. But I, I think what you're saying is is good. We used to have the the principals come in. Um, each principal would come into a board meeting, at least one board meeting a year, and talk about you know a specific piece that they were working on in terms of the ends. Um, mm -hmm. But I think we got to get your ends down in terms of what it is that people want specifically or or close to specifically, so we can begin working on. It. I mean, I remember we stopped those for a reason. I felt like that was because we felt like it wasn't really. Well, they were reading us what had been sent to oh, us okay. in an email. That is how I remember right. it. This would be more like an open discussion. Conversation. Then, yeah. Then. But, and, and we decided it was kind of micromanagement. No, but I think having them come in and if folks are, are talking about the math end is having, you know, either either Betty Young or a principal come in and say, this is what the changes have happened in terms of math in the last year at RES look like, and this is what we're working on, and this is what the results are so far. I think that's a, a, a worthy conversation to have. Um, plus, it's helpful to me, too, because the more that folks are talking about this stuff, the more it's in their minds every day as they're going about their work. Um, yeah, because that's, that's how you change culture. It's got to be in everybody. It's got to be on your mind all the time, every day, uh, for culture to change. I think the principals would really welcome the opportunity to come and and speak to you, especially if it wasn't just an expectation that they would read you, you know, a narrative, but rather they might share initiatives and hear if uh, your thoughts on their initiatives. I think that would be really welcome. So I guess just one one concern that may pop into someone's head is what's to keep the principals from just wanting to make you guys happy in a board meeting. They don't care about it, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty independent people. And again, that's a part of the that's a part of what the culture has been for, for many years is that I think a lot of it had to do with the reductions in staff that happened. Um, they were pretty much left, they were the masters of their own ships um, and every ship was doing its own thing. Um, and so that was one of the, the difficulties coming in was to try to centralize things a little bit so that we all had common goals that we were working on across the district, even though you still have control over some of how that shape is happening in your building. That was not a structure they were used to or, or comfortable with, they were used to doing their own thing. Um, and so that's been a, a, a tough push to try to change that culture there. Um, I, uh, I don't know how to answer that. You can ask them what would make them comfortable. Uh, doesn't... I mean, to some extent, everyone wants to be in line with their like boss, their employer's like expectations. And the nature of public education is though that people have the ability to speak their mind because of the protections in place. So it's not really the same as like a working for an employer at will. It's with the contracts in place, you have some ability to say, like someone could come here and say, I'm unhappy with the district level leadership. I wouldn't want to work in a place where people thought that way. I don't think they do. I think you're <laughs> let's, fine. Let's be but I think I think I mean I've worked in a district, not this one, but I've worked in a district where the superintendent um, was doing things that were not legal or ethical, and teachers came to the board and said, "This is a problem." I mean, it's real. Like there's a certain level of protection that people will speak up if there's a problem. That's, yeah, that's my observation from 20 years, 30 years in education. And these are these aren't folks that are going to shy away from stuff, which is good. That's how they should be. So we have this document from Portrait of a Graduate. 
Yes. Do these better align? Do these people talk about it's too vague, we need to flesh them out? Does this do it? This is a much better roadmap yeah. than what we currently have. Okay. <laughs> I have a couple of concerns with it as being, you know, heavily involved in it. Mm -hmm. I think some things sort of repeat themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that that's because we ran out of time and didn't go through an, mm -hmm. another dive. Like there's a couple of places where it says critical thinking. There's a couple of places where it says analyze data, and that's fine. So I still think of it as a draft. And my other concern is I don't think it's measurable. Um, but other than that, I love it. <laughs> but that's why if you had a group of, of folks together mm -hmm. that are charged with actually fleshing it out, is again, it's the same questions as the interpretations. It's okay. What does this look like? Right. What does this it look like, Adam? I think when when people think measurable, they're always it, it's not necessarily. I'm thinking of rubric, like a rubric that says this is like an emerging level and yeah. this is a distinguished level. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. for any of these competencies, you could say, okay, here's where I am now, and here's where I want to be. Right. I like that. It's because it's a self evaluation too, in that sense. It like, could be yeah. right. 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 These could actually, a lot of these, you know, we're supposed to have graduation proficiencies. That's right. That's a lot of these could be adopted as the graduation right proficiencies, and that mm -hmm. way you know they're getting met just through the, because the teachers are, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It should be a living document that is driving what the teachers are doing on a daily basis. Um, and they all had input into these. And they, I mean, the way the, the system's set up is Lane, Lane doesn't have the expertise to figure out a, a, a measurement yeah, for right. or an interpretation for all of these. It's got to be pushed down into the system for the the educators to sort of say this is this is what it would look like to have I'm just going to grab the first one uses knowledge and understanding to collaboratively develop solutions this is what it would look like in the fourth grader and they could do it out in a you know almost there <laughs> you know this is you know Got it. This one's really got it, you know. Um, but that's got to be done by the educators. Right. And then they have to have a rationale for why, you know, help us as non-educators, help us understand why you chose that rubric and, and, and so that we understand. And then we can bring that out out to the public and say, this is where we're headed. This is where we're going. This is the rationale for it. And if the public's like, wait, no, we don't want them to be doing that, then we can we can readjust. But um, I that seems to be, and, and in terms of dictating down, I would say, you know, Anybody doesn't want their 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 boss to be just saying, you know, you do it this way because I say it. You know, um, this should should allow people to sort of build up from the bottom to be saying, yeah, we're going to do it this way. This is what makes sense. Maybe the principals and the superintendent then take a look at it, but and in doing that, they may. They may or they may not agree that a homework policy is going to fix that. <laughs> um, but anyway, I would hope that would that would work well. I think that seems like a good idea. Can you guys hear me? My computer died, so now I have my phone. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I think is missing from this that I would us to ask is we'll never know <laughs> a full statement something about a culture something about the culture 
Well, I think some of that's in here mm -hmm. too about like the caring uh, connected, connected community, community member. Mm -hmm. yeah. That talks a lot to culture. Um, do we do proficiency based like report cards in? We do that in the high school. Uh, right? The tech center is definitely moving to that. The high school is at standards based not proficiencies so they are it's just this they're using standards and so it's a lot mm -hmm. does anyone have a high school student right now i reviewed them this year it's they're a lot it's a lot um uh vicky johnson one of our science teachers is sort of leading an initiative to start adopting proficiencies so i collaborated with her and shared this with her and she shared with me what she has and there's a lot of similarities very much like there's a lot of similarities with the ends and so as we're thinking of like what's the ends and what's our POG and what's our proficiencies for graduation, it would be nice. Just a line. Yes. Right. right. What's the other term? Proficiency standard versus the other one? Uh, Standards based grades and graduation proficiencies. So, I'm going to share with you Vicki's document because she shared right. it with the, they call it the RUHS leadership team. And it's basically your department chairs and a few other people like uh, your counseling leader and the principals and so it's it got it was well received it's certainly not a final but it was well received yeah because i mean even reading these some of these just sound like proficiencies like how you would evaluate a student on their ability to analyze information of their you know like yep there should be i think alignment there mm -hmm. which so would then make things more consistent too as far as the messaging that's being given like you're seeing these same things repeated in multiple different aspects and it's it's helping everyone kind of understand like this aligns rather than this is I hear this here but then here I'm seeing this and over here is another thing but they kind of sound similar but they're not really the same and I just feel like it, it helps you know and some of the confusion that might be under you know people experiencing Yeah, but these are at a these are at a that broader kind of graduation proficiency level as opposed to a standard. You know, there's multiple standards that would go into it, and uh, students will have to be successful on multiple standards, achieve multiple standards to be able to meet any one of these. But I mean, even when you're reading through these things, a lot of these, you know, you could associate this with a senior. You could associate this with a second grader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. that's what we should see in repetition through the years mm -hmm. and that consistency of the expectation, the message, and the alignment of what we're seeing students from elementary school all through senior year. And I mean, obviously this is, like you said, there's some redundancies, yes. but if you scaled these down and you like each, each one had maybe two or three bullet points underneath it. I mean, those, those would be your. That's harder than you think. Oh, I know. No, I definitely <laughs> know. Trust me. It is hard to like even leave out a word. Mm -hmm. Like you nope, don't want to leave know. out the word maybe empathy or equity or, or kindness, mm -hmm. right? And then you start to be like, where can I squish in that word? Um, it's really hard to take the thoughts of hundreds and hundreds of people and put it into one document. So, but I'm thinking if we're trying to bring this, <clears throat> if we're trying to bring this down, yep. you know, like it's like the triangle, we're trying to kind of move to yep. the top there. That could be a way to help us understand how we go from this to our roadmap of the ends. So I've shared this with you. Do you want me to share it on the screen as well? Yeah, like this um, draft PBGRs or not at this time? They're actually much shorter than I, the portrait I, of a graduate. I'm very interested to see it. I okay. just want to, in the uh, trying to be conscious of people's time mm -hmm. and that people seemed pretty sure that a, a six to eight thing was the capacity for mm -hmm. having a really rich conversation. So. I'd like to propose that we look at this mm -hmm. and then think about what our action items, not that sounds like we're voting on something, but what we're going to take from this meeting and nudge or push or do. I, so. would, I would push that um, 
if there are going to be changes to those ends, we get them done so we can start working on it. We get, say it again. If there are going to be changes to the end, uh -huh. that we, that's the first priority so that we can start working on them mm -hmm. um, as a group, especially as we're approaching the start of a new school year. Mm -hmm. I have the sense that they're not going to be huge changes to no, the ends. It's just going to be focus. clarified. Yeah. 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 Um, and as I look at the policy that exists, the mission statement, um, pretty simple. I think could be richer. You think what? Could be richer. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could be a. It's pretty boring. <clears throat> it's it's pretty bland. It's mm -hmm. up there, but it's very vague. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so like it is not inspiring at all. <laughs> but does that mean that a next step would be three people sit down and figure out how to marry these two documents together? What? I'm just trying to think. Or everybody writes their own ends and we come together and say, okay, like everybody takes this document and takes this document and says, from this, I would make it this way. And then we come together and bring them together. Mm. I mean, not that I'm encouraging homework. I am. I'm well beyond. <laughs> the face the of board has a homework <laughs> policy now. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, this is the work we should be doing though, right? But, not all work is in the meeting. Yeah. Uh, in my so this was Vicki Johnson's proposals for uh, PBGRs. We could all do that and then bring it to the... Yes. And you can see she's narrowed it down to investigate, analyze, create, communicate, collaborate as the green bar on the top. And under that, um, various ways that might be measured or demonstrated. This is the entire document. It's not multiple pages or multiple bullet points. This is the currently the entire proposal. Um, it's very concise. Um, so I just thought I would throw it in as these three items, the end statement, the portrait of a graduate, and the uh, PBGRs ultimately would align. Can you share that with us? I did, Thank via you. email. I did, I shared Thank this via email. Thank you. The current um, setting on this document is anyone with the link can view. Mm -hmm. So Great. it is currently set to be a public facing Sort of Can like for review, anyone who wants to to see it. Um, this has not been adopted. This is a draft. P R. So I have a P O G draft in here, but this yep. is a P B proficiency based graduation. So I just sent it to you the link to you via email. Did you not? I sent it to the O S S D board. I got this one. Did but it not come through? I just want to make sure. I said, the first email I sent had multiple links, and then I sent this. It should be alone. It, it, this one came now. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, homework is the next one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have something from a staff member. We have something from us, and we have something from a diverse group of students' community. So, I think if, if people kind of want to use one as their, I would propose, suggest, Use one as your kind of jumping off point and pull from the other two until you feel good about different categories. Um, why don't we, what is it, August 9th is the next yep. calendar in front yes. of us. August 9th. August 9th. Can I make a really, this may be a selfish request. Can we get like weekly reminders? To do this? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I need, yeah. I need, Thank I need you. To be reminded. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, can you remind me to send out those reminders? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, like that, that was clever. I think somebody uh, who's talented on Google can set it up. I could set it up as a, I could. Do you, like a text, just be like, do your homework. Yep, I can do a text group <laughs> bing group, bong thing. Group chat. But so let's try to. I, I, I want to figure out how to also make it really productive when we're in the meeting, if everybody's bringing their own stuff. If we're, that's why I kind of want to say, okay, everybody start with the ends as, the, as your skeleton. Mm -hmm. So we have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. You might add a five. You might add a six, mm -hmm. but let's use this as our as each individual jumping off point and and flesh each out, and then almost do a minute taking of it in real time, with people throwing out for each 
how you would flush it out. And, and uh, our lovely clerk, no, I'm kidding, I'm happy to you. But I think so we can see it. And so the so hopefully we have public here who can also see us um, working it out in real time. Is that? So work off of this one. Work off of this one, please. The, the ends as they are now. There's our action. Back to speech writing school here. We go. Pare it down, add it in. Mm -hmm. Make your own outline. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I also just want to um, review the other things we're going to be doing in the August meeting, which is uh, reviewing the letter that will be going out. Um, the We're going to form a committee to begin the process of the um, superintendent evaluation with um, VSBA. We included in the materials for that meeting will be the handbook as it is now, the, the student handbook, so that we can review it, maybe have a chat about it. Is this on Get August 9th? Correct. Okay. You have no requirement for foreign language. Well, there's okay. handbooks for yeah, you can't get school. into college without two years. So there's the high school, and then each elementary school has a handbook. So let's right. start. I propose we start with the high school. I agree. Yeah. High school is the, usually the flagship. So yeah. And you want both the faculty and the student staff. I mean, student family. I would, and and I think we can set aside a very, you know, defined amount of time to start talking about it. Probably won't end there, but if we have it in the materials before the meeting, we can become familiar with it. And if there are things we want to understand, or I just to that real quick. We got board, I got the board homework on the mission and ends. I've got letter to community, mm -hmm. committee creation, student handbook review, handbook review, and dun 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 dun. I think that's it. Wasn't no, I think I was just waxing poetic on okay. one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chelsea, this is Rachel. Um, yeah. There's a there's a comma missing and an R somewhere in that letter. So let me fix it and send it out to you with it in like okay. presentable form. Yeah, send it out to me and send it to the whole board so everyone can look it over okay. before the meeting. Okay. Or or Rachel. I'll just send. I'll just send it. I'll just send you what I sent. Perfect. Great, Chelsea. And and we'll have a review and possible vote to yeah, to this approve is, this it. This is maybe the most up to date draft of it. That means I, she just gave me like she's just going to use what I sent to her. So that means I can change it all the more and send it again. <laughs> <laughs> Cut off like half of it. No, I just think it's more I think it's going to be the shorter we can make it, the more powerful yeah. it's going to yes. be. The less redundant. Like it's no people stop reading by the second paragraph. Right. You got to hit them hard yeah. first. It's gonna be done. Right. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for when we found a date where we could all be here, which is fantastic, right? Yeah, eight. Heather, thank you for providing My so pleasure. much while, yeah, while we you. were in the meeting. Yeah. Um, I, be more prepared I move to adjourn. No need for an executive session, anyone? No. no, good. I have a motion to adjourn, do I have a second? Second. Uh, all, all those in fact, do we vote to adjourn? We don't need to vote. We, we don't need to vote. So, so adjourning seven fifty one. Wow, you're early.